This is a story from 365 Bible Stories and Prayers, published by Paragon Books Limited, copyright 2018, Cottage Door Press, LLC. Jacob's Favorite Son, Genesis 37, verses 1 to 3. Jacob had a large family. By the time he was living in Canaan, he had 12 sons. Of Jacob's two wives, Rachel was his favorite. Joseph was Jacob and Rachel's son. Rachel had another baby, but sadly, she died while she was giving birth to him. Jacob was heartbroken when Rachel died. He called the baby Benjamin. In those days, the eldest son was treated in a special way. Because Joseph was Rachel's eldest son, Jacob loved him more than his other sons. He spoiled him and treated him differently. Joseph and his brothers were shepherds, and they looked after Jacob's sheep. Because he was the favorite, Joseph would also tell his father if ever any of his brothers had been up to no good. Joseph's special coat, Genesis 37, verses 3 and 4. Jacob wanted to show Joseph how much he loved him and to show everyone just how special Joseph was. He had a beautiful coat made for him with long sleeves and many wonderful colors. It was the kind of coat that would normally only be worn by an eldest son. When Joseph's ten older brothers saw him in his special coat, they realized that their father loved Joseph more than he loved them. This made them sad and angry. They were very jealous of Joseph and refused to speak to him. Joseph's Dreams, Genesis 37, verses 5 to 11. To make matters worse, Joseph insisted on telling everyone about his dreams, in which he was always the most important person. Listen to this dream I had, he said one day. We were binding sheaves of grain out in the field when suddenly my sheaf rose and stood upright while your sheaves gathered around mine and bowed down to it. Joseph's brothers soon guessed what he meant. So you think we are going to be you are going to be king and rule over all of us? they asked. Soon Joseph had another dream. Listen, he said to his brothers. This time I dreamed that the sun and moon and eleven stars were bowing down to me. Joseph's brothers were very angry. But all Joseph could think of was that perhaps God had chosen him to be someone special. The Brothers' Revenge, Genesis 37, verses 8 to 24. One day, Joseph's older brothers were away from home, looking after the family's sheep. Jacob sent Joseph to find them and make sure that they were all right. The brothers saw him in the distance walking towards them. He was wearing his special coat. Oh, this is our chance to get rid of him once and for all, they said. So they hatched a plan to kill him. They could then pretend that a wild animal had eaten him out in the wilderness. They were tired of Joseph and his dreams. When Joseph arrived, the brothers grabbed him. But the oldest one, Reuben, shook his head. Let us lower him into that well and leave him there to die, he said, secretly planning to rescue Joseph later. The brothers ripped off Joseph's special coat and lowered him into the deep, dark well.
Joseph is sold as a slave. Genesis 37, verses 25 to 35. A little later, as the brothers sat eating near the well, some spice merchants passed by on their way to Egypt. Seeing them gave Judah an idea. Well, we won't gain anything if Joseph dies, he said. Why don't we sell him as a slave? And so it was agreed. Joseph was dragged from the well and sold for 20 silver pieces to the next group of merchants who came along. Then the brothers killed a goat and smeared its blood on Joseph's coat. They took the coat to Jacob, the father. When Jacob saw the torn and blood-stained coat, he cried out in pain. He was sure that Joseph had been killed by a wild animal. When Joseph's brothers saw how heartbroken their father was, they were very sorry, but they didn't dare tell him what had really happened. Joseph and Potiphar, Genesis chapter 39. Meanwhile, in Egypt, the merchants had taken Joseph to the slave market. He was bought by a man called Potiphar, who was captain of the guard at the court of the Egyptian king called the Pharaoh. Joseph served Potiphar well. He became a trusted and loved servant. After a while, he was put in charge of the master's house and later all of his lands. But before long, things began to go wrong for Joseph. Potiphar's wife was a bad woman, and she decided to make trouble for Joseph. She told her husband lies, saying that Joseph had attacked her when no one was around. Potiphar was very upset and ordered Joseph to be put in prison. The Butler and the Baker, Genesis chapter 40. After Joseph had been in prison for some time, two new prisoners arrived, the butler and the baker from Pharaoh's household. One night, both of them had puzzling dreams. In the morning, Joseph found them looking worried. God can explain dreams, said Joseph. Tell me what you saw. The butler told Joseph that he had dreamed of a grapevine. He had squeezed the grape juice into Pharaoh's cup and given it to him to drink. Well, the meaning is clear, said Joseph. In three days, you will be free and working for Pharaoh again. Please put in a good word for me. When the baker told Joseph his dream, in this dream, the baker was carrying three baskets full of pastries to take to Pharaoh. Birds flew down and pecked at them. Joseph listened, and then he shook his head sadly. This dream is bad, he said. In three days, Pharaoh will have you killed. And Joseph was right. Three days later, the butler was back at work in Pharaoh's palace but the baker was dead. As soon as the butler was released from prison, he forgot that he had promised to put in a good word for Joseph. So no one came to release him. Joseph remained in prison. Pharaoh's Dreams Genesis 41 verses 1 through 7 Two years later, Pharaoh started having strange dreams. In one dream, he was standing in a field by the Nile River when seven plump, well-fed cows came out of the water and began to feed on the grass. These were followed by seven thin, bony cows, which ate up the first cows. Pharaoh fell asleep again, and he had a second dream. Seven heads of grain healthy and good, were growing on a single stalk. After them, seven other heads of grain sprouted, 
thin and scorched by the east wind. The thin heads of grain swallowed up the seven healthy full heads. Joseph is summoned. Genesis 41 verses 8 through 16. Pharaoh was very worried about his dreams. So when morning came, he sent for all the magicians and wise men in the country. Pharaoh told them about his dreams, but no one could tell him what they meant. Then Pharaoh's butler remembered something. A while ago, he said, you were angry with your servants. You sent me and the chief baker to prison. One night, both of us had a dream, and each of these dreams had a special meaning. The butler went on to tell how a young Hebrew man, Joseph, who was in prison at the same time, had listened to their dreams and told them of the meaning. Things turned out exactly as he told us, the butler said. I was let out of prison and given my job back, but the other man was hanged. But this man can explain dreams. I must see him, said Pharaoh. Immediately Joseph was let out of prison and brought to the palace. Joseph explains the dreams. Genesis 41, verses 16 through 31. Then Pharaoh said to Joseph, In my dream I was standing on the bank of the Nile when seven cows came up from the river. They were fat and healthy, and they were eating grass at the river bank. Then seven more cows appeared. They were scrawny and very ugly. I had never seen such skinny cows in the whole of Egypt. These scrawny cows ate the seven fat cows all up. But even after they had eaten them, they looked just as skinny as before. And then I woke up. In the next dream I saw seven plump heads of corn growing on a single stalk. After them, seven dried-up heads of corn sprouted. The dried-up heads of corn swallowed up the seven plump ones. I have told all the wisest men in the land about these dreams, but no one can explain them to me. And Joseph said to Pharaoh, Both of these dreams are telling you the same thing. There will be seven years of good harvests, but seven years of bad harvests will follow. There will be famine and no food. Joseph becomes a leader. Genesis 41, verses 32 through 57. Joseph told Pharaoh, You had two dreams telling you the same thing, because God has decided that it will happen. Now, Pharaoh, you must look for a wise man and put him in charge of storing grain in the good years to help you through the bad years. Pharaoh thought this was a good plan. He decided to make Joseph his chief minister. You shall be in charge of my palace and all my people, he said. Only I, Pharaoh, will be greater than you. Then Pharaoh gave Joseph a gold ring from his finger and dressed him in fine clothes. Joseph set to work all over the land, making sure that enough grain was stored. Everything that Joseph had said came true. Because they had planned well, there was plenty to eat when the famine came. Joseph's Brothers, Genesis 42 1 through 17. In Canaan, the famine was making life miserable for Jacob and his family. They had hardly anything to eat, and they were very hungry. Jacob heard that Egypt had wheat for sale and decided to send all of his sons, except for Benjamin, to Egypt to buy some grain. 
So the ten brothers set out on the long journey to Egypt. When they arrived, they went to see Pharaoh's chief minister to ask for wheat. The brothers did not recognize Joseph, but Joseph knew them at once. He decided to find out if they were still as cruel as they used to be. You are spies, he said. The brothers tried to explain that they had come from Canaan to buy food, but Joseph ordered them to be thrown in jail. Joseph asks to see Benjamin. Genesis chapter 42, 16 through Genesis chapter 43, verse 15. Three days later, Joseph told his brothers to go home and bring back their youngest brother to prove that their story about needing grain was true. Joseph loved Benjamin and wanted to see him again. He kept one brother prisoner to make sure that the others would return. Joseph ordered his servants to fill his brother's sacks with wheat before they left and to secretly place the money that they had brought to pay for the wheat on top. Back at home, the brothers told Jacob everything. We paid for the grain, said one, but we found money in the sacks. That makes it look as if we stole it. We must go back to prove that we are honest. Jacob was terrified of losing another son, but eventually the wheat ran out and the family went hungry. Judah begged his father to let them return, promising to look after Benjamin. At last, Jacob agreed. Joseph fought back tears when he saw his favorite brother. He still did not want his brothers to know who he was. The Missing Cup Genesis chapter 46, verse 16 through Genesis chapter 44, verse 34. Joseph still did not want to tell his brothers who he was, but he was pleased to see them all. Is your father well? he asked them. As they replied, they bowed low to him, just as the sun, moon, and stars had done in the dream so many years before. Joseph ordered food to be brought in. He told the servants to give more to Benjamin than to anyone else. Then the brothers' sacks were filled with food. This time Joseph hid his own silver cup in Benjamin's sack. The brothers set off for home. But they had not gotten far when Joseph sent his guards after them to search their sacks. When the missing cup was discovered, the horrified brothers threw themselves at Joseph's feet. The guilty man must stay here and be my slave. The rest of you can go, Joseph commanded. But Judah knew how much Jacob loved Benjamin, and he was determined not to break his promise to look after him. Please let me stay instead, he begged. My father will die of grief if Benjamin does not return. Reunited. Genesis chapter 45, verse 1, through Genesis chapter 46, verse 7. Joseph was delighted at these words. Now he knew his brothers had changed for the better. He sent his servants out of the room and told them, I am your brother Joseph, he declared. His brothers were shocked. It was God's plan to send me here to Egypt, Joseph explained, so that I could look after you and many other people when the famine came. There are still five more years of bad harvests to come. Hurry home and bring the rest of the family here to live near me, and we will be together again. Joseph hugged Benjamin. Then he hugged the rest of his brothers as he cried tears of joy. So Jacob and all his family left Canaan and came to live in Egypt. There 
Jacob was reunited with his beloved son, Joseph.